Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me today as we look a bit more in detail at the brand new portable HF, VHF and UHF transceiver from ICOM, the IC705. In this video we'll be looking at setup and operation. So the first thing to do is connect your preferred power supply. You can either use the supplied power cable for 13.8 volt operation or the battery pack. We'll be using the battery pack and it just clips into place on the back of the radio like so. The IC705 utilises the high capacity lithium ion battery from the ID51A and the ID31A handheld radios. A 13.8 volt DC external power supply can be used for operation and the charging of the BP272 battery pack. The battery allows up to 5 watts of output power but when you connect the 13.8 volt power supply you have up to 10 watts and the external power socket is on the side of the radio. On the other side is a BNC antenna socket for connecting a HF or VHF and UHF aerial. This is the only antenna socket so if you want both connected at the same time you'd need a diplexer. Behind this rubber pad is the speaker mic socket for the supplied microphone to plug into and just below is the slot for the SD card. Just on the microphone if you want to use the radio's front mounted speaker you'd only plug in the mic plug and leave the speaker plug unplugged. Now, there has been some discussion online about the quality of the speaker on this radio, but there are menu settings to change the bass and treble of the audio to suit you. It comes from the factory set to default, but some tweaking of the settings allows you to achieve nice, bassy audio, which is really good quality. The micro SD card slot enables the storage of user profiles, QSO recording, transmit voice memory keys, RITI login, GPS data, screen capture, firmware upgrades and programming. And below the BNC socket is a ground connection point. Back to the other side of the radio we have the micro USB socket for connecting to a computer and also as an alternative way of charging via USB should a 13.8 volt supply not be handy. And next to that is the socket for a Morse key. Just above is the connection for a separate antenna tuner and just above that is the socket for an optional linear amplifier. Underneath the radio are four holes for mounting on an external optional desktop or mobile mount which ICOM sell and the middle screw hole allows you to fix the radio to the LC192 backpack should you select this option when you buy it. On the front of the radio is the various knobs and buttons along with the LCD touchscreen and front mounted speaker. The screen has a matte finish and is really bright which makes it easier to see out in the sunshine if you're operating portable and the majority of the features and settings are accessed through this as opposed to lots of buttons. If we switch the radio on you can see we get the battery level and external voltage if a power supply is connected as well as your RF power level. On the screen we have the frequency readout, mode of operation, S meter which is multifunctional and the amazing full width waterfall display. We also have the GPS logo along the top. If GPS is activated, the radio will acquire a GPS signal when the radio is turned on. The internal GPS receiver and antenna provide location login, receive and transmit locations via DPRS, near me repeater search and scan, QSO recording with metadata and internal clock synchronization. To the right of that is the Wi-Fi logo, which only shows when the radio is connected to the internet. And this allows D-Star operation over the internet. If you press the frequency readout, you can access the different bands the radio supports, as well as FM and airband receive. You can also select the mode of operation by clicking the little menu option here as well. Now, there's only a few buttons on the front of the radio, which I much prefer than a complicated array of buttons. This knob is the AF control and you can turn the volume up and down from here but if you press it once it shows you the RF gain and squelch levels which can be changed using the touchscreen. Above is the power, vox and core buttons. The power button is self explanatory of course but the vox button allows you to turn voice activated transmission on or off and the core button allows you to send out a preset call which is ideal for contests and rapid fire operation of the bands. The twin bandpass tuning knob allows you to narrow the IF bandwidth or move it around by pressing it and moving either section 1 or 2. And this knob is the multifunction control which shows RF power, mic gain, comp displays the compression level and the monitor function enables you to monitor your transmit signal in any mode other than CW. The menu button opens the radio's main settings. 
Scope allows you to select scope view, which shows you the spectrum in real time in the form of a waterfall display. Audio shows your receive audio levels as well as transmitted audio. Voice allows you to record and select eight pre-recorded messages. For example, you could record a CQ call or just your call sign for use on contests and pileups, which saves you repeatedly calling yourself. Meter is a handy one. As well as being able to select between different meters on the main screen, you can show all meters at the same time, and this just allows you to monitor things in a little bit more detail. SWR shows the SWR graph, which displays the SWR of the antenna on the frequency you're operating on. Memory allows you to set up and access 100 memory groups, where you can store and organize 500 memory channels. Scan allows you to scan between different frequencies, memories, and bands. And MPAD is MemoPad. These are handy when you want to temporarily memorize a frequency and operating mode, such as when you find a DX station in a pileup, or when the desired station is busy for a long time and you want to temporarily search for other stations. You can use the memo pads in both VFO and memory modes instead of relying on pen and paper. And by pressing the button on the right here, you can recall the memories that you've stored. Record allows you to record and play back both transmitted and received audio. This is handy for listening back to contests afterwards to confirm call signs, signal reports and locations, or just to monitor an interesting frequency when you're away from the radio. And finally, the set menu allows you to set up Bluetooth, wireless and SD card settings and things such as the radio's functions, digital voice settings, display and time settings, maintenance, firmware info and clone, which allows you to import and export memories, settings and firmware. On the next page of the main menu is mainly DSTAR functions. DV opens up digital voice memory, which stores call signs or repeater information to use in digital voice mode. CS allows you to edit, store and select call signs for digital voice mode. CD opens the receive history log. DV ARPY or DV auto reply allows you to store automatic replies on the SD card, which can be set up for when you miss a DSTAR call. DV GW is for DSTAR gateway settings, which you can configure the radio to operate on DSTAR over the internet. Picture allows you to send and receive photographs over DSTAR. GPS allows you to enable, disable and set up GPS functionality. And you can send or receive location information if you wish, or just access it to know exactly where you are using the internal receiver and antenna. DTMF allows you to store DTMF sequences. And finally, there is a secondary settings menu access point. To the right of the screen, we have the RIT button, which enables receive increment tuning. This compensates for differences in frequency between you and another station. The function shifts the receive frequency without shifting the transmit frequency, so you don't have any issues receiving someone who is slightly off frequency to you. The XFC button allows you to listen to the transmit frequency if you're operating in split mode. For example, on a repeater, you could listen to the repeater input briefly. And the MPAD button allows you to access the memo pad we talked about earlier, and if you press and hold it, it will memorize the frequency you're on, as well as all the settings so you can recall them again later. And the scan button allows you to scan in VFO mode or memory mode, depending on which scan profile you're set up in the main settings. Above the tuning dial is the transmit and receive LED indicator and the charging indicator. And there's also a light sensor which detects light levels and adjusts the screen's brightness accordingly. I should also mention that pressing the power button once turns the display on or off, which helps preserve battery life. So that is the top line setup and operation on the ICOM IC705. An absolutely amazing software defined radio which I just absolutely love. Uh, some of these shack in a box multimode radios can be quite intimidating but it's so easy to use and the menus are really easy to navigate especially if you're familiar with ICOM equipment. I use an ICOM 5100 in the shack which is getting on a bit now but there's a running thread of familiarity between the ICOM family which really helped me to navigate the 705 despite them being two completely different radios. So I hope you enjoyed the second in the series on the IC705. Join me next time as we look in more detail at the operation. We'll be looking at RITI, we'll be navigating the bands and seeing what we can pick up and also doing an on-air test. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions or questions, drop them in the box below. And if you want to buy this radio or pre-order it, depending on when you're watching this, there's also a link in the description as well. And all that's left to say is 7-3. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.